In this video, I'm going to teach you all about the useful and practical Lightburn Move commands so that you can set up and create your projects perfectly every time. Hi. My name is Gil, and in part one of this masterclass tutorial, I'm going to break down how to use Lightburn's move commands. By understanding what is available in Lightburn, you can set up your projects time and again without having to do it manually with a bunch of clicks or using some basic tools to stop you from getting your projects launched straight away. So let's jump straight into it. Okay, so let me reach over and let me turn on my Emblazer 2. So I've got the lid up so you can hear probably through the microphone. I apologize for the noise, but I wanted you to see what is actually going on with the laser head as we go through these different features and really focus on the move commands to move your laser head into the different positions that you may need when you're actually working with your laser. So the very first thing that I want to show you here is the set laser point by clicking on the page. This actually happens to be a tool in the toolbar and you can actually find it right here and I'm going to click it on it right now. It should actually pop up. I'm hoping it'll pop up. Yeah, there you go. Set laser position by clicking on the page. It's just under the text and the ruler tools. And what this means is if I click anywhere in this, in this work area, it'll actually move the laser head to that approximate position. So I'm going to pick right in the middle of this uh, shape that I drew. And there you go. You can actually see that the laser head on the emblazer actually moved to the approximate area uh, that I'm actually trying to select. And I can actually hold down that with, a, with the mouse left click and I can actually drag the laser head all around the place. Personally, I don't really like that feature. I just like clicking in the middle of it and letting it go exact to, to the place. That is a really fast way of being able to move your laser head to a position. Maybe you've got a piece of material in there that you've done half a job, uh, or maybe it's a, you've set up a jig to be able to go and work with a number of different materials or pieces. If you want to get the laser head in the, that area, that is a fantastic way because it just moves to that point. I use this quite often. It's a tool. Once you've finished with that tool, you can hit the escape or just hit the select again and it'll allow you to select the material, then go back. Maybe we want to move it over here. Bang, it goes straight to the place. Even with the stuff selected, it's not a problem. It's not going to select it. And you can actually see something that's really interesting about this that I just want to point out. So I'm about to click here, but if you keep your eye on the ready in the laser tab here, right? Just keep your eye here. I'm about to click, I'm clicking now. You can actually see that job is being sent live to the laser, at least on the Emblazer 2, and I'm sure on a lot of the machines that use the G-code system. So my computer here is sending information directly and live to the laser cutter, which is something that I really be aware of, especially when you're working on different jobs. So the next thing that I want to introduce you to, normally if I'm working on a project, you can see here uh, I've got all of this on a uh, on a line layer I might change that and move it to a maybe I'll, I'll do that as a fill instead normally when light burn opens up you're on the cut layers you go into the material library which you talked about before you go in set it all up we're good to go we can always check that job no problems now let's say this happens to be something that I want to maybe embroider on a le on a leather wallet well I can move it all the way down to the origin point, which is at zero, or in this case, I'm going to do it in the middle of the laser so I can get it in that area perfectly. Oh, hey, there you are. I didn't mean to interrupt this video, but I did want to take a moment out to ask you to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss out on any other laser videos and tutorials that are coming up. And if you love lasers and making things, you have an invitation to come along to the laser live streams that we run every two weeks on this channel. It's a great place where you get to share the work that you've created and even share some of the magic you've learned along the way. But right now I want to get back to this because I've got a lot more to learn and share with you and that's going to come up real soon. So you know what? I'll see you soon and let's get back to the video. 
So in this case, I'm gonna actually open up the move window. And the move window allows a whole lot more options to move the laser head around your laser. Uh, and you here, you can make a simple move or create positions that you can use again and again. Now, we're gonna talk about these move keys in a second, but before we get to that, I wanna introduce you to these options up the top. Now, I don't know if a lot of people use these or not, but let's go through them. Very first thing I want to show you is the get position button. If I hit that button, it comes up with the X and the Y and the Z coordinates of the laser head within the laser. So you, so let's just go and hit the home button, which happens to be in the middle here. We're going to move the, uh, the head laser head all the way back to the home position, which happens to be the top left of the emblazer two. I'm going to hit that get position again, and you can see the numbers changed to zero, 300, and 50 perfect so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move that i'm going to work out what the the coordinates are for x y and z you can see here i've got 100 and 150. let's hit the go button here and see what happens and you can see that the laser head moves exactly to that coordinate so if again if you happen to work out exactly where the position is maybe you're doing repeatable jobs maybe you want to build a jig to hold a number of pieces in place maybe you want to start in a certain position or you want to check uh, the position with the laser this is a way you're able to do that and along with that comes this these save positions and you'll see i've got some test positions and a jog position i'm going to create one now so let's say for, for all intents and purposes, 100 and 150. Well, let's change that. Let's actually go to uh, 150 by 163 because I want to make this an original. So let's go hit the go button. It's a little bit up and to the, to the right. No problems. We're going to hit manage and I'm going to create this as an add new site. And I knew that I had that original jog position at a, as 100 and 150, so I didn't want to do that again. And what I want to do here is I want to call this, uh, we're going to call this uh, jog position for jig, right? So there we go. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit home again just for, this, for the sake of the purposes. We're going to let the machine home. And what you're going to see here now is the fact that I'm going to go to jog position. Oh, well, we'll go straight to a jog position for jig. I'm going to select that. And without doing anything else, the laser head has gone to that position. Maybe I'm going to do it for the first jog position. And you can see it moved to that original position. I actually even have a test position here, which is going to move all the way to the top. And there you go. So again, you can create as many safe positions as you want and be able to select that position and move the laser head to that straight away without having too too many problems. It's a very simple, as I said, just go to the manager. If you've got a position that you don't want anymore, you can highlight it, you can delete it. You're all good to go. And of course, that's now disappeared from the save positions. So again, something that I don't think a lot of people use, but I'm incredibly, uh, I, I've discovered this and already used it on a number of jobs. And I just think to myself, this is a, a great feature within Lightburn. So have you used Lightburn's saved positions function before? What did you use it for? Share with us down below in the comments section, and then join us again for the second part of this Move Commands Masterclass for Lightburn. And while you're waiting for the second part to drop, come and check out these tutorial videos right here. And until that happens, Go off and make something amazing. We'll see you soon.